Manchester City versus Tottenham. Tottenham Hotspur. Um, a game of a lot of headlines entering it. Discuss, discussing potentially Tottenham helping out their arch rivals in Arsenal. Manchester City having, having to win this game to win the Premier League. Because essentially this is a game if they dropped points in. If they lost, they make it so difficult for themselves entering the last week. And if they drew, then they would rely on goal differential, which is heavy towards Arsenal entering this game. But winning this game, winning this game 2-0, puts them back on top of the Premier League with 88 points, two points ahead of, uh, of, Manchester, of Arsenal. Two goals ahead of our, um, two points ahead of Arsenal, and now they control their own destiny in the final week. They beat Aston Villa at the Etihad. They are the Premier League champions, and that's thanks to today's game. In a game that I thought in the first half was a little bit of sh little shaky for Manchester City. You saw a little nerves for Manchester City, not wanting to mess. This up a few passes um, that went astray, a few bad moments lost in possession in bad areas, um, not really looking fluid throughout the entire team. Um, Tottenham, both teams playing ridiculously high lines like they did, especially in that first half. You saw in the first half, Tottenham really played very, very compact, then they allowed a city to spring it out Why to Kyle Walker. I feel like Tottenham went to entering this game thinking well, our, their philosophy was we um, make it compact, we get rid of any passing lane he may have, and we allow Kyle Walker to be on the ball because he is, when you could look at this Manchester City team, he is one of the weaker guys on the ball, um, especially in that position, um, putting in a cross and all that. He really, really struggled. He played in some a few bad balls in, early in the game. Then the rifle, he had another one where he rifled it in. I thought that was one of his better balls. But but they they allowed the width to be, you know, the, for there to be space on the width for Manchester City. And Manchester City did a good job moving the ball from one end of the pitch to another, opening up that Tottenham defense. They just couldn't get that breakthrough. And Tottenham, they also had a few of their opportunities. Benton Court had one on the counter after Hoiberg played a delicious diagonal ball into, I believe it was Brennan Johnson. And then Brennan Johnson hit um, Benton Court, who um, Ederson was saved. And, you know, this game, there was a lot of goalkeepers that made some important saves. And it was shaky, it was shaky, ending the first half. The second half starts, and City were able to find their breakthrough with a City-esque goal. Erling Holland, with his biggest goal of the season up to this point, scored the goal that happened after De Bruyne hits him on, um, on, a, cr or on a low cross um, from close range. And then Holland taps it into an empty net. And then it seemed like, okay, Manchester City, that was the sense of relief, the sign of relief. And, you know, we just thought everything would be smooth sailing from there. But Tottenham did have their opportunities. Tottenham had opportunities and um, um, uh, Ederson had to come off of an injury uh, due to like a nasty head injury. He was very, very frustrated and agitated as he was walking off. Seemed like the... The, the training staff is the one that wanted him off. It was potential head injury. Whether it was the fact that it was a potential head injury and they're just looking at it from a safety point of view or they think Ortega coming in gives us a better chance than uh, uh, Ederson who does seem hobbled. But Ortega came in and he made a, some a miraculous, important, game-changing saves. And there was an opportunity with um, a couple uh, with... Kuleshevsky running in between the Manchester City defenders and Ortega being able to save it with his leg. And then there was a one-on-one um, a -on -one opportunity Son had after a mistake. I believe it was from Akanji and Son went in and or Ortega came up with the save one-on-one. -on -one. And, you know, 
again, I mean, Pep Guardiola said this after the game. If we do become Premier League champions, it is because of Stefan Ortega. Or he said something of that sort. sort. He said, I think, St or he said, St Stefan Ortega saved the Premier League for us. And you know what? You could argue that because those were two massive, massive st saves that he had to make. And it was so unlike Man City that they would even concede those kind of opportunities. But at the end of the day, Man City always finds a way to get it out in these fine margins in the Premier League when they need the games down the stretch. When you look at it, when they looked down and out, going up against Leicester City, the second to final match day, Vincent Company is the one that, you know, Vincent Company is the one that drilled it out of his, out of nowhere to give them the lead in, this, in the late in the game. And that ended up helping them or that ended up winning the Premier League title essentially. And they needed that sort of moment in this game, but not from Vincent Company. It came from Stefan Ortega because those saves were massive. I mean, if Son is able to get that one-on-one -on -one to go through, I mean, we are looking at a whole different landscape entering the final match day of the Premier League. Um, it's, uh, it's heartbreaking for Arsenal's when you see Arsenal fans when you see that. Maybe it adds a little bit of an element to um, them not uh, hating Spurs even more than they currently do, um, which I don't know if it's possible. The atmosphere, in my opinion, was not the greatest of atmospheres. We'll cover more on that in the later segments when we talk about Postecoglou's comments. But um, it didn't really seem like Tottenham fans were really that much into the game. And it was a little bit of a, not a dead atmosphere, but, you know, not the greatest of atmospheres. We saw Postacoglu, you know, discussing with one of the Spurs fans, telling him which side are you on. Again, we'll go to this. We'll reach this point later on. We'll talk about that. Um, I don't want to touch too much on it right now. But regarding the game, I mean, I can't, I can't put into words how important of this game was for Manchester City. If you look at it, this was really their last heavy block entering that week you know the last week game of the season because West Ham at Etihad they fully expect to win that game and to win it quite comfortably I mean this is Manchester City we're talking about and um, and this was kind of the last test but you know what Tottenham they did put up a you know a fight I'm Tottenham you know like the previous games when you looked at the games against like that they've lost in these in this bad streak that they're in currently. You know, there's some games where they seemed they were just out of it. This game was not like that. They, they played pretty, pretty well. They generated chances. They defended well at times, but uh, they just couldn't get over the line. I mean, when you look at the stats, 10 shots to 10 stats to Tottenham, eight shots to City, five shots on target to Tottenham, five shots on City, they out-possessed. Uh, Manchester City, which me was remarkable when I think about that 54% possession to 46% for Manchester City. You know, they played a, a very good game and they played a disciplined game and a game that maybe they could have, they should have got more out of, but they couldn't get that ball into the back of the net while Erling Haaland was able to. And then, um, but after that breakthrough goal on the counter, Phil Foden placed a sublime. I mean, it's an absolutely beautiful ball played into um, uh, Jeremy Doku. Jeremy Doku in a one-on-one -on -one situation is a, is a nightmare situation to be in. Um, uh, and um, Radu Dragsu Draguzin, I'm trying to pronounce his name correctly, gets his back turned in a split-second moment. And as Suisi turns around, he reaches, he reaches in with his foot, catches Doku. And then Erling Holland draws it in no gives no chance for Vicario. 2-0 Manchester City. And you could tell by the the adrenaline, the way that they were celebrating, the way that they were screaming, those Manchester City players felt their fingertips on that title after that goal. They felt their fingertips on that trophy. And you could tell by the celebrations, not just from them but also from Guardiola after the goal. You saw Guardiola, whenever Akanji made the mistake, falling on the ground, but then seeing that it was saved and standing back up, 
It actually reminded me last year when they went away to Liverpool at Anfield earlier in the season, a struggling Liverpool team. Jao Cancelo, I believe it was Jao Cancelo, ended up making a mistake at the, about the halfway point. Salah was able to get on the end of it, and Salah went through one on one and puts it, put it away. And that exact same reaction happened from Pep Guardiola, where he fell to the ground, but he couldn't stand back up in relief. And this, in that situation, it ended up being a goal, and Liverpool ended up winning that game. In this situation in a situation where they needed that to happen for them to win the Premier League. Ortega makes the stop. Manchester City get by the same way Manchester City always gets by as they are one of the best teams in Premier League history.